This is a first tutorial on Simulink. It's just an application to open Simulink, uh, simulate a dynamic system. And what we're going to do is review, uh, first of all, that uh, you know, we are going to open up MATLAB. Okay, and Simulink is a part of MATLAB. Okay, so we're just going to um, become familiar with a little bit of what Simulink can do to help us with dynamic simulation. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up MATLAB. And uh, after MATLAB opens, then, uh, then what I'll do is just type Simulink in the window, and that will open up the Simulink, um, the Simulink program. Okay, so I'm just going to type Simulink right in the command window and select Enter. And then what that will do is pop up a new window um, that will allow me to create a new worksheet for Simulink. Okay, so here's a Simulink library browser. And there's a couple things that you'll notice. The thing that we want is this new button right here to create a new uh, Simulink worksheet. And, uh, and then we're going to drop some things into this, um, into this worksheet. So the first thing that you need to do is just open up MATLAB and then type Simulink. And uh, when Simulink comes up, select the New button. And this will give us a new Simulink simulation uh, workbook. OK, so um, what we want to do with this um, is, uh, you know, in Cars, the movie Cars, there's uh, the scene where Luigi uh, meets Michael Schumacher. And uh, he's very, he loves Ferraris. Um, this is actually my dream car, a Cinquecento, um, not the Ferrari. But we want to compare if we have a change in the input, let's say a step change input from 0 to um, 100%. Okay, we want to compare the performance of the Ferrari to the Cinquecento. Okay, that's a little Italian car. I love the old uh, style of this. Okay, so we want to be able to do the same, um, the same input, okay, for both of these, zero to 100 percent, just flooring it on the gas pedal, and then observe the speed uh, difference, okay. So you can imagine that the Cinquecento may have just a little bit more dead time than the Ferrari, and uh, the top speed may be less, okay. Um, so let's go into Simulink and just simulate these two. Uh, with our basic knowledge about first order plus dead time models. So FOPDT, our first order plus dead time models. And we're going to have three parameters for each of those, KP, tau P, and theta P. And that's our gain, our time constant, and our parent dead time. Okay, so um, let's just go into back into Simulink. And I'm going to open up the library browser as well as the, uh, the Simulink sheet here. Okay, so let me make this just a little bit bigger on both of these. Okay, so I can just adjust, um, I can just adjust the window on this. And what um, I can do as well, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit after I drop the first thing in. So uh, what I can do is come up here to the search um, now you can either just browse through, you know, commonly used blocks, um, or you can search. Or uh, you know, there's a hierarchy here of uh, different objects that you can drop into this sheet. Okay, so what I want to do first of all is just search for a step. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to um, search through all of the different objects that are available and come up with a, uh, a step function. Okay, so there it is, and then I'm just going to drag it over to my sheet. Now, actually, I want to zoom in, so I'm going to hit the Control Plus a couple times just to be able to zoom in, so I can see that. Um, I'm going to rename this. If I select the text, I'm going to rename that as Gas Pedal. Okay, and uh, that one I want to step time the time that I want it to start stepping. I'll give it five seconds. Okay, so you got the uh, red, yellow, green at the starting line. That takes five seconds to hit green. And then final value, we're going to go up to 100% on the gas pedal. Okay, we can leave the initial value and the sample time alone. Okay, so that's going to go between 
zero and a hundred percent. Okay, now I want to um, also grab something that's going to generate the response uh, for my system. So that's uh, the, the process model, and that's going to be a transfer function. Okay, so I'm going to grab a transfer function and just drag it there. Now this one, I'm going to call this one the Ferrari. Okay, so there's my Ferrari. And let's say I have a gain of two. Okay, so that means if I have 1% change in my gas pedal, I'll have a two mile per hour increase in the speed of my car. And uh, let's say also that our time constant here is, uh, you know, to get 63% of the way to the final steady state. Um, let's just say for the Ferrari, that's going to be uh, six seconds. Okay, so if I go zero to 100% on the gas pedal, it's gonna eventually get to 200 miles per hour and it's going to get 63% of the way there, or 124 miles per hour in six seconds. Okay, and uh, we will click Apply, and that updated my process model for the Ferrari. Now the final thing that we need to do is um, go into the Simulink browser and also be able to view the output of that. So I'm just gonna select a scope. Okay, and drag that over as well. Now none of these are connected. Okay, so um, what I want to do is just go ahead and drag it over. You can left click on one and drag it over until you see it complete uh, the connection. Now um, I can also change the final simulation time. I'm going to go out to 30 seconds just to see uh, what happens with the speed of the Ferrari after 30 seconds. Okay, so there I have scope and I'm going to open it and just bring it over here um, and so you can see after 30 seconds it's getting up to um, you know the full speed there uh, at five seconds that's when the step started and then it got up to let's see 63 percent of the way there in six seconds about 124 miles per hour in six seconds Okay, so there's the, the process response of the Ferrari. Okay, so um, let's do the same thing now. I'm just gonna copy this transfer function, so I'm gonna select it and do Control C and then Control V. Okay, so this is going to be my next one. This is going to be my Cinquecento. Okay, so in Italian that is the 500. Um, let's say that my gain, if I put 100% of the you know, gas pedal down, um, it might get up to um, 80 miles per hour. Okay, so I'm gonna put 0.8 there, and the acceleration time is going to be significantly uh, less. Okay, so it's gonna get 63% of the way there, let's say in 14 seconds. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and click Apply. Now, I can either make a new gas pedal, or I can just apply the same gas pedal uh, to both of them. So I'm just going to right click here on the line and bring off a new uh, signal line and just put that same signal, the gas pedal, that went from 0 to 100 percent also into my uh, Cinquecento. Okay, and then um, also I want them on the same plot as well. Okay, so the thing that I can use to do that is a MUX. Um, so MUX in the search window and uh, this will combine two signals together. Okay, so I have my gas pedal, and I'll just go ahead and drag that down here to about the middle, and, uh, and then I'm gonna drag my Ferrari in as the first signal, and then my Cinquecento in as my second signal. Now this is going to be the speed of my, um, of my vehicles. Okay, and uh, if I drag this in, and uh, then click simulate and open up the speed then I can see my Cinquecento speed uh, it'll eventually get up to 80 miles per hour but it takes a lot longer to get there and the Ferrari that gets up to about 200 miles per hour so asymptotically it's approaching those final values but you say well that isn't really realistic and we might have some uh, delay in there as well um, you know, when you hit the gas pedal, the car doesn't immediately start responding. Okay, so I'm going to put in 
um, just a little bit of delay or dead time. Okay, so I'm going to type delay. Uh, so this would be something that um, you know if if you had uh, you know hit the gas pedal, the car doesn't respond for just a fraction of a second, or that could also be um, you know due to due to other things like reaction response. You know when you hit the gas pedal, the light turned green, light turned screen. You might have a little bit of a a delay there. Okay, so I'm going to put in a transport delay um, as well, and then I just got to break this signal. Okay, put in the transport delay. So what I'm going to do now is just say that the time delay for the Ferrari is 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, and that is uh, actually I just copied that. Um, and make sure I just have one. Okay, I'll just call that um, Ferrari delay. Make sure I have the 0 0.5 in there. Okay, and then uh, I'm also going to have a delay for my Cinquecento. And I'll just copy this and rename it as 500 delay. Okay, so I have um, my delays in there now. So that's going to take the output from the original output that I have and add on a bit of a delay for this Cinquecento, let's say it's going to be two seconds instead for the engine to start working when I hit that gas pedal. And uh, let's simulate this again. So the green button is a simulate. And I open it up and you can see I have about a half a second here and then here about two seconds delay before it starts uh, responding for the Cinquecento. Okay, so that is just a brief introduction on how to do dynamic simulation within Simulink and we've compared the dynamics of a Ferrari and a Cinquecento uh, car and uh, you know with this um, we can do more complicated models um, and I'll be showing in later tutorials how to set up controllers as well not just uh, to do the simulation Okay, so that concludes uh, this brief introduction to Simulink and a brief introduction on how to model dynamic systems.